Well, that's uh, The Ballad of Billy the Kid by Billy Joel. Right now we have the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim patriot's fight to save his faith. He's one of the great doctors of the country, one of the great minds of the country, one of my great friends, Dr. Zudi Jasser. He's also the uh, founder of um, one of the great civil rights groups of our time, about which I wish there were more said and done, uh, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. And he is also a member of the International uh, Religi uh, International Commission on Religious Freedom. Dr. Jasser, happy July 4th to you and your family. Happy 4th to you, Seth, and it's it's great to be on the new greatest program. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hopefully it won't stay just new. Dr. Jasser, listen, uh, July 4th, your book is all about patriotism. Your book is all about America. America is the first word in the name of your civil rights organization. Um, I know a few better Americans than you. I wonder if you might just tell me and our audience what July 4th means to the Jassers and put it in the context of that wonderful letter you write to your children in your book, which I recommend everyone get, of course, book being a battle for the soul of Islam. Dr. J, take it away. Oh, well, I'll tell you, this holiday to us is, you know, even different than our religious holidays, which are personal between us and God. Is the, is the greatest holiday of the year, and that the American Founding Fathers were struggling against the very things that I dedicated my book to, and I wanted my children to carry on in our legacy, and that, you know, people think that my work is all about Islam, and certainly I believe that Islamism is the greatest threat, but I'll tell you, as devout as I am, God will take care of his own religions, whatever, whatever path that is. It's not about religion. It's really about America. I, I think that if Muslims don't wake up to counter the ideological threat globally, as we see growing in every corner of the planet right now, America is going to be at risk. And Independence Day is about people who said they wanted to no longer have intermediaries between them and God, especially government. They wanted government out of the way from worship and to allow them to have true religious liberty and separation of church and state and the Establishment Clause especially in that, in that meaning. And to me, that is the central cancer of Islamism. And in the letter to my kids, I tell them that, you know, your grandparents, my father, felt American within minutes of stepping off the airplane when they immigrated and escaped and were waiting months until a congressman in Ohio gave them the ability to be uh, legal in America as political refugees. And that moment when they became legal and when they took their citizenship oath uh, five and a half years later was uh, the greatest moment of their lives. And that identity as Americans is really what gives them the freedom to be creative, to be religious and devout and pray and fast and choose to build mosques. I remember my father building, being one of two families, uh, three families, to build the first mosque in northern Wisconsin. And uh, you know, he looked at me, and I talk about this in my book, and, and said, and I was in uh, sixth grade at the time, and I remember this. He said, you know, remember this day and that we could do this here more freely than we could in Muslim-majority countries. And uh, it was just amazing. And then it wasn't an easy thing to do. It was in 1980, right when uh, there was the hostage crisis. There were some families that were opposed to it, but even though there were a few hundred people opposed to it in Wisconsin at the time, 98% of the community stood behind us and made sure that we could build it, uh, including rabbis and priests and others in the community. And and, uh, you know, that's what Independence Day is about. Uh, it's about the difference in American, the American experiment, especially compared to Europe's democracy, is that we celebrate the public display of religion, the, the, the fact that we are a constitution uh, uh, under God, uh, and that uh, our rights are inalienable from God, not from government or clerics, and, and that uh, that's enshrined in our constitution. And that's really, I hope, the identity that my kids get as they hopefully uh, listen and get some things from what we talk about around the dinner table. You know, God bless you, and God bless that sentiment, Zudi. We're talking to Dr. Zudi Jasser, author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. And I love this idea you raised about what makes you Americans and how you became Americans, because it's an old sentiment that's just been forgotten, unless you lived it as you did. Abraham Lincoln on the 4th of July. It's one of my all-time favorite quotes. He's talking to a group of soldiers, and then he's talking about another group. And it says, 
This other group are men who have come from Europe, German, Irish, French, Scandinavian, men that have come from Europe themselves or whose ancestors have come hither and settled here, finding themselves are equal in all things. But if they look back through their history to trace their connection with those days by blood, they find they have none in common with us. They cannot carry themselves back into that glorious epoch and make themselves feel that they are part of us. But when they look through that old Declaration of Independence, they find that those old men say, who say that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, then they feel that the moral sentiment taught in that day evidences their relationship to us. That is the father of all moral principle in them, and that they have a right to claim it as though they were blood of the blood and flesh of the flesh of the men who wrote that declaration, and so they are. That's what connects us, isn't it? It's the moral principle of equality. It is, and you cannot, there is no way to epistemologically prove that equality unless, I believe, unless you believe in God and that ultimately we are all created equally from God. And thus it's very interesting that the, the, the counter to the Church, the, the battle against theocracy, was only legitimate from pious individuals. It can only be done by individuals that felt that they demanded to have a personal relationship with God because they were each equal creations and there were no differences based on IQ and skill sets, whatever else you wanted to do. Uh, in the Nietzschean way or whatever it is, that ultimately those that believed in God uh, were equal. And, and that's what is enshrined in the Declaration and, and our founding documents and principles. And the Jeffersonian Papers on Religious Freedom, we have our Muslim Liberty Project kids read those because it really, you know, there's that debate uh, uh, we talk about which in which Madison and Jefferson won against uh, George Mason and others who wanted to put the word Christian and into the documents, and Jefferson and Madison won that because it was not about which sect of Christianity was right. It was not about a particular church. It was about God, and that God-centric society is important. Otherwise, you lose morality, and that's what the Tuckerville taught us in, in his writings by saying that, you know, dictatorships don't need God, but democracy does, because otherwise you need a police state. And I think that's what's so important as we look at our immigration issues in America and we look at solutions in the Middle East. If you say that Islam is the problem, you will alienate the very future of a society that, if it's truly democratic, has to have a religious source of its values. Sure, sure. I think it comes down to a natural law understanding, doesn't it, whereby if you can say a, a society that has— a society that venerates moral virtue has 300 million policemen. A, a society that denigrates moral virtue will never be able to hire enough. I think we can agree on that. Absolutely. For America's birthday, I'm making a donation to the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. I hope you folks will, too. AIFD, AIFdemocracy.org. That's Zudi's group. That's a great American sentiment you just gave us, Zudi. God bless you and the Jasser family. God bless you, Seth. Thanks, Appreciate sir. It. Have a good one.